All right, one more quick bug fixing video for you guys. Uh, currently, we are in the falling block room, and if you play from this room, um, if you basically just stand still under our falling heads here, uh, they will drop, but they don't always quite push you off of the, uh, the block here. Sometimes they do, and then you get the game over, but so basically what we want to do is we want it to be so that even if you don't get pushed off into the pit, when one of these hits you, it needs to do damage. So currently no damage is being done. Um, luckily, we already know a little bit about how to apply damage through these traps here. So we just need to apply the same logic here. So let's remind ourselves how the damage system works by opening up our fire traps. So we have our activate the, for the fire itself, the visual aspect of it, and we have the deactivate here. And um, here's where we do all of the actual damage. So uh, this checks every tick if the particle system is active. And if it is, we check if the player is in the collision box. And if they are, we just apply the damage once, then we wait a second, and then we allow more damage to be applied. So um, the crux of this is essentially this apply damage node here. This is how this is working, and it's working with our health system that we set up for the player. So we just need to put something like this into our other traps. So let's close this out and open up our BP falling blocks. So um, here we have our player reference created. We have all the animation information for moving the blocks. And we have the animation information for resetting the blocks, but at no point are we applying damage. So let's think about where and how we want this to happen. So um, we want this to happen essentially if the mesh hits the player. Now we're not checking for that at any point. We're just checking to see if they, if the player is overlapping in our collision box, which is what causes it to fall. So let's click on the static mesh here and um, let's scroll down to some of the events that we can use here. So there's on begin overlap, on, on hit, on wake. So um, if we hover over these, um, you can see what they do. So on component hit, the event is called when a component hits or is hit by something solid. This could happen due to things like character movement. So let's try to use on component hit here. So um, this is checking for the static mesh component specifically, which is exactly what we want. But we only want this to um, do anything when it hits the player. So when it hits the ground underneath, we don't want this to fire. So the first thing we need to do is duplicate this condition check here with control D. So we just want to see if the other actor is the player. And let's just make sure that this on component hit node works the way that we are expecting it to. And the way we're going to do that is with a simple print string in the true. So if the static mesh hits the player, we're going to print hello. Let's try this out. I'm going to play from here. And there we go. You see it all in the top left hand corner of the screen that it is firing when we hit the player. So now it's firing many times because it's basically checking for this every tick. And um, we only want this to do this once. So right here is where we'd want to put our do once node. Let's move this out to give us a little bit more room to work with. So let's check this now. Now we should only get one hello printed when we get hit. So we are getting our hello here. Sometimes um, when things happen very quickly, they don't really register on the screen, but we did get our little hello printed there. So from our do once, we want to apply some damage. 
and the thing we want to damage is the player. So now we just need to decide how much damage that this falling block is going to uh, give us, essentially. So uh, if we look at our fire damage, it gives us a base damage of 10. So um, it's, our falling block should probably do more damage than that. So um, let's, let's try a base damage of 25. It'll take a quarter of our health when we get hit here. Let's try this one more time. Oops, do it again. Let's come in here, play from here. So now it is taking a quarter of our health when we get hit. However, um, it is taking a little bit longer than it should. And I believe that has to do with this do once node here. Or maybe the, even the collision on our falling block itself. So let's just double check our collision settings here. So I'm going to open up the static mesh editor and I want to show our collisions. I want to show our symbol collisions. So basically this is the geometry that our player needs to come into contact with in order for this to fire. So So it's not the most, it doesn't appear to be the most reliable, but it does do some damage. Okay. So we may just want to expand our character collision a little bit here or add another sort of collision volume around this that is larger because it seems to be that it's just missing the character a little bit. So um, the way that I would handle this is to add another collision to this mesh here. We have our trigger here that um, allows the block to fall, but we can add another collision volume to this. So let's add a sphere collision and make sure it's parented under the static mesh. So I'm just going to uh, move it and scale it accordingly so that it encompasses the entirety of my mesh piece here, but it also extends a little bit beyond it. Okay, something along those lines. Now, for this here, we need to change the, um, the way that we go about this. So because this is not as reliable as we need it to be, we're going to use an overlap event um, the way we have been doing for our other triggers here because they seem to be a little bit more reliable. So we're going to select the new sphere collision we put in, and we're going to use our on component begin overlap for the sphere and we're going to check if it's the player and then we're going to execute all of this here. Okay, so now we have that applied across all of them. So now uh, when we overlap with this sphere collision, we should be taking damage and much more reliable results. Okay, so um, the only thing we need to do now is to put a delay on this so that we don't accidentally take more than one quarter at a time. Let's give it a one second delay. And then we're going to plug the complete into our reset and we can reroute these to make them easier to read just by double clicking. And um, there you have it. Now we have our damage here for our player health system.
So it looks like we are still printing out our actual values. So to fix that, we just need to find where that print is coming from. And I believe it's coming from the player. It is coming from the player right here. So to get rid of that 75 that keeps popping up in the corner every time I get hit, all I need to do is bypass this print string and then delete it. So now when I come into here, play from here, in and play, it's still detracting from our health bar, but it is no longer printing our health values. So now we can either be pushed into the pit by these, or uh, we can uh, be just take some damage from them as well. So that is all for this video, and I will see you in the next one.